Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Today, what I want to do is I want to tell you or show you the Artemis Project. This is a worker dice placement, worker placement game from Grand Gamers Guild, our friends at Grand Gamers Guild. Uh, who I have to thank for providing a review copy. Uh, we love Grand Gamers Guild ever since uh, Mark Spector introduced us to Garinto, which is still, I think, one of the best abstract strategy games out there. So this is a review copy. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have not played this game. I know very little about this game, except for just a little bit of research I did before recording this video. So I wasn't calling, you know, the first player marker, the um, something it's not <laughs> a starting resource or something. Um, this looks like a, a fairly heavy involved game which it seems to be the kind of weight that I love. This plays one to five players, so that's important for some people. You can play solo, which is pretty cool. Um, but the main thing I'm here to do today is to show you what you get in this box, which the one thing I wish I could show you is the weight of this. Like my arm is getting tired holding this up with one hand. This is one heavy box. There is a lot in this box. Um, that part's rather surprising. Please note this is in no way an instructional video. I have not played this game before. I have not read the rule book. I just did a little bit of research, so I kind of knew what I was talking about when I recorded this, and I may make mistakes. If I do, please let me know in the comments below. So here's my copy of the Artemis Project. First thing we'll do is take a look at the sides. Got the nice Grand Gamers Guild logo there. Oh, no, we have the Artemis Project, the Artemis Project, the Artemis Project. Not a lot of info on the sides. We'll flip over the back just for a moment. Kind of gives an overview of the play, shows off some of the components. Look at this list of components, though. Like, we're about to go through that all, but, like, that's a long list. This is a heavy box. And, again, I mentioned one to five players. It says one hour play time. We're coming up. We're coming up. There we go. So I'm trying to think of the best way. I think I'm just going to toss the lid out of the way. So we're going to do a quick look through the rule book here. Um, oh, here it says 60 to 75 minutes. It's amusing. They're like, oh, surprise. It might take longer than you expected. So a actually really impressive looking component overview here. Board setup, general setup. Okay, I like it's color coded. Nice touch there, Mark. Uh, tile face and phase. Yeah, the phases of the game are color coded as well. A lot of examples in a separate column from the rules. I'm digging this rule book. Text a little smaller than I would have liked, but I'm old and my eyes are terrible. Yeah, I love the fact this is color coded. That, that is a really nice touch. Going through the various phases. This is not a thick rule book. Yeah, we're all in the shake ship. Interesting. So instead of a draw bag, there's a different way to have people come out of the ship. I'm amused by that. Game end and final scoring. Ah, uh, there are no, no, no page number. I don't know how many pages this is, and I don't feel like counting them. Fairly thin rules. Uh, I like it. Here's a nice summary on the back. What am I looking at here? Oh, appendix for the building and solo play rules. So again, full solo rules. We're going to get that out of the way. We're going to try to show off the board. Oh, it's not that big. It's only a single fold. Okay, that'll fit. Nice. That, that's nice. It's a nice size. I like it. So it's just the it's a worker it's a worker placement game. We're gonna place dice in various spots to do things. Uh, again, this is not a teach. Uh, what I do dig is the score tracks in the middle. I thought that was an interesting look. I'm so used to being on the edge. Something about this makes me think Thunderbirds. And I think we get into what makes everything in this box so heavy, and it's the amount of cardboard. Yeah, look at that. That's a lot of cardboard. That, that, that's, I haven't opened a game with that much cardboard in quite some time. So we're going to go through these. Uh, these are various buildings you can build during the game. They should be um, on the backs. We'll show various stages of the game. Like if you're in phase one, two, three, turn one, two, three. And then they're going to switch for the later phases, right? Four, five, six or six phases in the game. Um, various buildings. Art's nice. Um, I'm surprised by the duplication. I didn't realize it was going to be like duplicates of the buildings. But that's not a bad thing necessarily. Other tokens, one of the, the main resources in the game, which I, sorry, I forget. It's uh, the Europa. I, I can't remember what they call them, but that's fine. Obviously, you can generate a lot more resources just in case you run out of tokens. There's times fives. Another board of that. Here is the ship. I, I'm amused by this. There, There's literally this little hatch access drop ship thing. I'm looking forward to playing with that. Then we get into the rest of the components, which, man, like that's a lot of cardboard. We're going to put the cardboard over here for a minute. Dice. Um, what I like here is I'm, I'm not positive. I do not have vision issues. 
but I am pretty sure those are perfectly colorblind friendly dice. That's the somewhat unique colors from what we're used to in most board games. But they're standard D6 dice, curved edges, nice solid. You can hear them. I don't think I need to open these up to show you. Lots of stuff in here. Holy cow. Okay, so we're going to take out everything here a little bit at a time and go through it all. So this is going to take a bit to, to get through this unboxing. Oh, chunky bits. I don't know what these are. Okay. So again, I haven't played this game. Oh, I'm a little disappointed by that. We got a little card bending here. This, I'm wondering if it's like some kind of like a little expansion pack that was tossed in. I do know this game was kickstarted. So it's possible there were some uh, stretch goal type things. What? Is, oh my God, that's heavy. Wow. All right, we're going to save that. Whatever that is, that's part of the... That, this is probably 10% of the way to the box. Maybe more. This didn't say, like, Deluxe Edition or anything on the box, did it? No? Nope. Cool. As far as I know, this is a Retail Edition. All right, I got to show off the player boards just because it is one of my favorite things. You see it there? Dual layers. Love it. I love dual layer boards. And again, not quite the colors you're used to, but probably because they're more colorblind friendly. This does play five players, so five different player boards. We're gonna put those away because those were pretty simple. Now, what I'm gonna do is just ditch the box. I'm not like eating it, it's still around. So there's a really nice Artemis Project baggy because you are gonna put your um, your people, um, colonists or whatever they're called, are gonna go in here and you're gonna pull from a bag to figure out what's available. There is one of the main resources, the cubes, energy type stuff you can collect. They're just pretty standard plastic translucent cubes, a little bigger than the usual board game cube. So that's worth noting. It's a little chunkier, a little chonky. I have to guess one of these is a first player token because <laughs> there's some really neat chunky pieces here. Do they go together? No, they don't hook up. So there's like a cool tractor thing. Again, I haven't played this, so I, I'm not sure what some of these components are for. And then there's like a UN building here with a bunch of flags on top and a, I don't know, a hole to put something in. Cool. Well, it'll be interesting to find out what those are for. I'm, I'm going to guess one of them's first player token, but I don't actually know. All right, what are we going to do next? Let's let's go through this baggie of wooden bits. So one of them is, is uh, the other resource type. I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of the various resources. These are hexagonal tubes of wood, which I love it because they're hexagonal, which means they won't roll away. It's so much better than just a cylinder. They're in kind of a grayish color. Then we have briefcases, supply crates. Um, these are used to modify your dice. It's another one of the resources in the game. And they look like green little, you know, briefcases. Kind of neon green, bright, dig it. These are the trackers for your score and one of the other tracks in the game. Uh, they're in the same five player colors. Nice wood. I'm not going to bother opening those up. Then we have our four different worker types. Um, these aren't workers like these are the workers you put. It's a dice placement game, so you're playing the dice out. But you can modify things based on workers, and when you try to activate buildings, you place workers on them. It's a little different. Again, this isn't a teach. So these are, oh, I'm going to forget the names, administrators or something like that. They remind me of, like, Dune. You got purple, oh, purple kind of standing person. I think the reds are space marines. So you can kind of see he's holding like a little ray gun there. Very, very, they're like meeple on diets. They're very skinny compared to your average meeple while being just about as tall. Uh, then you have the scientist-y people, which I got to say, I do dig the, the color coding. And then you have your standard colonists, which can be used for, for various jobs, but can also be upgraded to the other types. And these look like, like dudes with a backpack, basically. Nice, solid components. Um, I like that they made the legs particularly like wide so that they stand up well. Yeah, that's honestly not easy to knock down without giving it some effort. Very cool wooden bits here. We have extra baggy for stuff, always appreciated. Uh, let's grab these quick. We have some nice big cards, like a uh, tarot size at least, possibly bigger. Um, the only thing I would be concerned about, these, you wouldn't need it for these. These look like real summary cards. Okay, in a package that's resealable that Mo can't open. There we go. 
see, I shouldn't, I should have just flipped this. So all of the final scoring tell there's a little bit of a point salad going on here. And then your summary that I got to say, based on what I know of this game looks way more complicated than it actually is, but it looks like a solid summary card. Five of those, which I'm going to keep in the resealable bag. Then we get to the event cards, which are massive. Like again, they're uh, almost tarot size, if not bigger, depending on the tarot deck you have. I don't know if, if the average person fights this much with resealable bags, but I'm having a hard time. So yeah, I gotta say I dig the art. It's very striking. Oh, there's a nice linen finish on these two. Really nice linen finish. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Like look at that, just striking art. This shows what event phase it's what, what play phase it's gonna go off on. Oh, I love that. I am really digging the art in this game. So a whole bunch of these. You're only going to use some each game. Not all of them. I probably shouldn't be bothering to put them back in the bag for an unboxing. Uh, I'm still not sure what this is. I'm guessing some type of promo. So there's one event card in here and one of the upgrade cards in a package in a purple die which sadly uh, did not transport well. So that's going to take some flattening. We're going to have to throw that under a heavy book or something for a while before I want to toss that in with the rest of my cards. But with a little purple die, and then there is a little pack, and then there's, oh, here you go, how to get it, how to use it. So yeah, a little kind of mini expansion in here. I'm reminded a bit of Underwater Cities with the one, uh, was it Green Dome? Cool, nice bonus I didn't know was coming. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. We, we got three things left. So next up is a pack of cards that looks extremely well sealed. I found the tab. Once you find the tab, it's never that bad. Again, the art's nice. Art is nice. Various cards. How many victory points are worth at the end and so on. Or no, no, that's not victory points. That's difficulty in completing the mission. Again, not a teach. If I make any mistakes, feel free to point them out, but this is meant to show off the components. I guess, hey, the iconography seems really clear. Like, that perfectly matches that resource. I know that means some of those cubes. That means a person. I think it's a generic person. That's that resource I couldn't remember the name of. And I think some of these are going to require, there's the briefcases, and they're green. Like, having not even played the game, I can tell what I need to complete this card or what I get. I'm not there. There's the part I don't know. If that's what I need to complete or what I get, I think that's actually what you get. If you complete this mission, I, I am loving the art. I absolutely adoring the art on this. It's very bright and striking. All right. No happy place to put these in. So I'm going to toss them in here. Baggy that happen to be available. All right. Hobbit size cards. I wonder if these are for solo play. Cause I don't recognize these from, you know, the promotional materials I've looked at. They all say directive on the back. And there's a little summary here. Is, oh, it's a mini expansion. There you go. Another one. So like two cool, nice little bonus mini expansions. All right. Go it alone. Toughen up your crew. Fill your tank. So cool. Nice little mini expansion. Bonus. Always like bonuses. Surprises are nice. That's why I don't actually unbox these ahead of time and just show off the components. So I can be pleasantly surprised. All right. This has got to be like the coins. It's got to be. They're so heavy. I might take that baggie back out. And well wrapped. <laughs> yeah, oh wow. It's 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 metal versions of that one resource. Oh my god. Look at that. That is awesome. I'm sorry that I, I wish I had my close-in camera. Sorry I'm no longer in the studio. We had flooding. I'm having to record from my office. That is like high quality. That reminds me of like a pin or a pin that I would have on my backpack. Oh my gosh, those are nice. So nice. That's awesome. All right, we are going to put them back though and just fold them up how they were. Um, I, I, my concern would be scratching them. Like, like, were they overly cautious by putting them in this packaging to make sure you don't, they don't come scratched? Cause you know, gamers would not take well to something like this showing up scratched. These are going to go in a baggie eventually. All right, now we just got to put everything back, which honestly, trough inserts kind of not the best, but there's a lot of stuff in here. Some people like third-party box inserts. This looks like a good candidate for one if you are 
someone who does that or if someone who designs them. There you go. Opportunity here, I think. Um, everything did fit back in well enough. I could have done a better job packing, too. I just kind of tossed stuff in and all the cardboard. Uh, I, hmm. Okay. I need to do a little better job on the dice. Okay. How about we put the dice right there? There we go. That's a little better. Rule book. Really looking forward to checking this one out. This looks good. This looks really good. This looks like my kind of game. I like medium heavy-ish, but not too heavy games. Sometimes I like a heavy game. I enjoy a food and chain magnet now and then. But for an average game night, I like something with, with some meat on it, but not too heavy. And that's what this looks like. What you get in the box with the Artemis Project from our friends at Grand Gamers Guild. Thank you, Mark, for... Uh, Sending a copy of this home with us from Origins. I'm really looking forward to checking this out, especially after seeing the components. Um, I like the fact that I was surprised by that. There were a couple things in the box there I did not know, like the metal tokens. Now I feel even worse for not remembering what that resource is called. But the metal tokens, um, there was a mini expansion, and then it looked like there was a second little mini expansion with a new event. Uh, okay, so I do want to point out the the Kickstarter symbol indicate Kickstarter additions and upgrades. Great. So on the back of the box here, you can kind of see it. There's a whole bunch of stuff marked in green that were unlocked during the Kickstarter. I am so looking forward to checking this one out. This this looks hot. This is I, I am extremely proud. The art, I love, I love how striking that is. It just pops. I dig it. Dig it a lot. Really looking forward to playing the Artemis project from Grand Gamers Guild. Now, when I do finally get down and uh, get the rule book read and start playing the game, I will be talking about it on my social media feeds. You can find me everywhere as tabletop bellhop one word. Eventually, we'll do up a review during the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which record live Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. And that gets turned into an audio podcast you can find on your podcatcher of choice, as well as video on demand on YouTube, youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop. And I'll also do up a written review on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Enough self-promotion, right? You've heard enough. Good day. Game on.